this video is extremely important. Pay close attention, take notes, watch it several times, subscribe to the channel. Also look into the description, I'll be updating it because a lot of times they suppress my comments uh, with more information. Okay, when it comes to these Louisville shootings, you know, the shooting in Louisville, when it comes to the Orlando shooting, what is the underlying root cause? I mean, we're getting nowhere as a society as all other people seem to be only talking about the shooting took place, gun control. I mean, it's sick, you know? People are getting massacred all the time. People are getting raped and killed. Nine million people starve to death a year in the world. And all you want to talk about is relatively petty, petty issues. Whether or not you can own a gun is petty compared to the masses of people starving. Saving the whales is petty compared to the masses of people starving. Every issue other than moral precision and the point of life is petty compared to eugenics and the masters of people starving. So that is part of the underland cause. People are aware of that in a subconscious, uh, uh, to a subconscious degree. Okay, they're aware in their unconscious mind that they live in a society that's more concerned with their stupid guns and acting like some punk redneck and their stupid left-right middle agendas than they are caring about the point of life, universal pinpointing moral precision, which is the point of life, and the divine order instead of these despicable orders that we see. So what is the what are the issues they're trying to distract you from with these shootings? Okay, it's a it's a it's a textbook military strategy, military industrial complex, right? They they uh, uh, it's a it's a diversionary attack, a diversionary strike, okay? And it's a series of them because serious stuff is going on right now. And I'm going to give you two points to help you understand those things. I'm going to explore it more in the comments and in the description because they're hacking my phone. It's going to slow down the um my ability to upload the video, and I want to get these things done with. Okay. Remember, my kingdom is not of this world, and it is not good for the righteous one to be shunned by attractive females. Okay, point number one, all romantic relationships that the righteous person would partake in must be righteous and in the boundaries of what is logically righteous, as there is no other way to have a righteous relationship. Okay, this is key. This is part of why the gun is even a phallic symbol. It's connected to the states and the, the corporate states sexual control. It's connected to that. Okay, so jump into conclusions that something is not righteous because it is controversial and stigmatized, okay, is, is, is illogical and evil. Or because people have said something similar, you know, to, th to what is being said and they're stigmatized, right? So again, they're feeling me, so it's making it harder for me to articulate. And if you look at the nature of my argument and how many groups like the police and the military, they're flat out not allowed to make these arguments. Okay, political parties, they're not allowed to make these arguments. Sex cults, they're not allowed to make these arguments. Gangs, they'll make their, their street, it'll cause the feds and stuff to crack down their street. They're not allowed to make these arguments. So it's obvious that they have a motive to fume me, and I, I demand the benefit of the doubt there. Point number two. Okay, so remember, point number one. All romantic relationships that the righteous person would partake in must be righteous and in the boundaries of what is logically righteous, as there is no other way to have a righteous relationship. If it's not logically, if you don't have sound logic in regards to what's a righteous relationship, okay, then it's not a righteous relationship, okay? Point number two. Now, this, this one's a bit more controversial. Bear with me, okay? This has everything to do with the mass shootings, especially Orlando, Louisville, you name it, right? Uvalde, you name it, Highland Park, you name it, okay? It has to do with marrying a captive woman. So here in America, they have a captive audience. People come fleeing from other countries to America, and they get sexually exploited, coerced, what have you. It's take it or leave it. Be beggars can't be choosers. There's all kinds of Leonard and, and liberal conservative arguments where they're subtly and otherwise coercing females. It is against divine law. It's against the, the Judaic law. It's against Christian law. It's against Muslim law. It's against sound moral law, okay? And it is occurring. Rape by deception is one of the main problems that causes uh, these shootings, the underlying cause, the root cause. Okay? So Deuteronomy 21, 10. When you go to war against your enemies and the Lord your God delivers them into your hands and you take captives. If you notice among the captives a beautiful woman and, you, and are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home and have her shave her head, trim her nails, and put aside the clothes she was wearing when captured. After she has lived in your house and mourned her father and mother for a full month, then you may go to her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. If you are not pleased with her, 
Let her go wherever she wishes. You must not sell her or treat her as a slave since you have dishonored her. So what is being said here? They're, they're saying that if you're fighting a war for moral precision, it's not just God is the source of moral precision, but it has to actually be morally precise. Precise, right? Precision and decision are connected ideas and concepts and words. Okay, so if you are doing that and these people are basically captive to sin, then you might take them at captive, right, physically, okay, and you may force the female to marry you. Why exactly? Now, bear with me. Some of you are like, oh my gosh, he's a religious fanatic. My religion is moral precision. I'm not a Christian, Muslim, or Jew as such. My religion is moral precision. Why did the author of the Bible say that's okay? What was he thinking? What was his, his judgment call there? What was the moral logic and the moral justification for such a claim? Okay? Well, it's quite simple. Okay? It's that people's marriages are invalid because they're based on immoral logic. Again, I tell you, people's marriages are based on immoral logic unless God, or rather moral precision, which, which is the spirit of God, really, and rather, rather, moral, rather they have the, the sound moral logic okay, for it to be valid. So here in America, just like everywhere else in the world, people are married in the boundaries, the mark of the beast, right? The boundaries of a rape by deception, subtle coercion, distraction, psychology-based rape by deception. Military-grade psychology is going into confusing people about who they would otherwise sleep with, okay? They're confusing them about what they want to do in regards to marriage, reproduction, and sex. Therefore, their marriage is invalid, and they're a slave to the idea of sin. They're a slave to the principles of sin and evil. They're a slave to confusion, and it's organized, calculated, corporate state, military industrial complex confusion. That's why these shootings are taking place, to distract you from the reproductive cycle. And you hear people talking about population control. Okay, why are they talking about population control? Because population control is sexual control. It's controlling the type of people they want there. You think they want to get rid of their families and have everyone else's families reproduce as long as they do it a certain way? No, they want to control who reproduces to control what kind of people are in the nation. Okay, so therefore, there is no other logical conclusion than that these are diversionary strikes for the purpose of state-sponsored sexual control. There's no other way to look at it. And that's why when we see, uh, when we go down to verse 18, it says, if someone has a stubborn or rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of his town. They, sh they shall say to the elders, the son of, uh, this son of ours, is stubborn and rebellious, right? He's rebelling against morality. So obeying them in this context is obeying God through the divine order is what they're saying in the story, right? It's just a story, okay? They say they shall say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard, right? Symbolically speaking, you know, spiritually speaking, right? So father God, mother Jerusalem in the sky with God, right? The city of God in the spiritual realm with God is the true mother and God is the father, okay? So if they're, they're not obeying God, Okay, they're basically like a glutton and a drunkard. They're just they're hedonistic. They're just following their emotions. Now listen what the, to what they say they should do. Okay, then all the men of, of this town are to stone him to death. All the men of his town are to stone him to death. You must purge evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it and be afraid. So America is a Judeo-Christian culture country historically. Okay, historically. So where do they get their conceptions of morality? So according to their own cultural values, their marriages are, are invalid because they're captives to sin and they're not in the morally precise divine order. You say, well, what's the divine order? Just like Jesus said in the New Testament, why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? The divine order is an order of universal pinpointing moral precision and focused moral intensity. And we see in Proverbs 16, 12, that the throne is established through justice and righteousness, okay? Are your social orders, your corporate orders, your military orders, your state orders, okay, your president, are they just and righteous? No, not even close. Are your parents just and righteous? No. Are your churches? No. Your mosques? No. Your synagogues? No. Your temples? No. None of your groups are just or righteous. All of your marriages are invalid. And on some level, people know that. 
right? Think about brain function. I'm a brain surgeon's son. Think about brain function. On some level, the unconscious mind is aware that there's invalid marriages. These guys aren't madly in love with a woman because you've raised women to be dumb enough to fall for it, and you, you're part and parcel in the process of them falling for it. Whoever does not gather with the spirit of moral precision scatters. Okay? And as a result, people are susceptible to the technologies, including psychologies of the state, which are pushing them to doing these horrible mass shootings. You've made them susceptible because of your cultures. And it says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if Christ was made at the creation of the world in the story, then Christ was there in Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 21, where it says that those who are outside of the moral order, those who are slaves to sin, can be taken captive in war. And they can be forced to marry because that's how invalid the marriages are. Is my argument that people should think that they're right with God and grant and kidnap people? No, I'm not saying to do that. My argument is your marriages are so fucking invalid that the, that God in your Bible said it's right for you to be taken captive and for your daughters and wives and sisters to be forced to be married to somebody doing the right thing, who's morally precise, who has focused moral intensity and not some mere human rules and conformity like some kind of coward that re refuses to do us right in a life that's short. And that your cultures are so despicable that in your own book in Deuteronomy, it said that you should be stoned to death because every moment you're unrepentant sinners. You refuse to repent. You hear all the time that God judges you when you die. How come you, you don't stop being evil? How come you don't stop conforming? How come you don't stop being dumb jocks and dumb rockers and dumb gang members and dumb corporate greedy people and dumb wolves in sheep's clothes in your churches and mosques and synagogues? How come you don't stop your sin? Because you're slaves to sin. Therefore, you're headed for hell and your marriages are invalid. And this is at the center of the root cause of the mass shootings. You must repent and accept that I am Christ. Thank you.